Ooh. Hey guys, it's Josh again. Back with another video. Um, so I collect old Pokemon cards and sometimes new Pokemon cards. Uh, today, I want to teach you guys how to value your Pokemon cards. So, before we get into valuing them, we have to tell the condition of the cards. So with that, I'm going to look through my binder here that I just got. And uh, we're going to go through the different types of conditions. So, first condition is called Near Mint. So, a Near Mint card, you're looking for no flaws in the front of the card. So, looking for any scratches, whitening, bent corners, creases. This card looks pretty good, but we're going to check the back. As you can see, there's only a little bit of whitening. A little whitening's okay, because no card is like perfect unless it's a gem 10, but we can't say that for sure. So this card looks pretty good. I would consider the, the card near mint. So now, next condition, lightly played. Lightly played cards, you're gonna have maybe some slight scratches on the card. You can't really tell. When you're looking at it straight away, you have to like look in the sun. So this card looks pretty good. But I'm gonna flip it around and check the back. Now for the back, you're looking for whiting. See, like this is like a little excessive whiting. So I would consider this card lightly played because of the whiting on the back. And um, there's no creases or anything, but we'll get to that to the next condition. So I would consider this card lightly played. Next condition is moderately played. Moderately played, you're gonna have a lot of scratches that you can see, some creases maybe, some really whitening on the back. So let's see if we can find one. Ah, here we go. All right, so look, you got crease or like a bent on the top here. Then you go down, you got another crease going off the side of the card. Now the crease is not going across the card. Once it goes across the card, uh, that would be towards like the other conditions we'll get to in a second, but yeah, I'd consider this card moderately played. Let's check the back too. Here's the back. You can see the dam or the crease on the other side too. Yeah, like a lot of whitening here. So yeah, this card would be considered moderately played. All right, next one is heavily played. So we're gonna look for a heavily played card. There we go. So, this card I would consider heavily played. You can see all the scratches and all the little nicks all on the sides here. So, this card would be considered heavily played. I'm gonna look at the back here real quick. Oh, uh, yeah, so you got like a lot of nicks, whitening, excessive whitening on the corners. So, this card would be heavily played. Next condition would be damaged. So, damage. The creases are going to be across the card, even on the corners. You're going to have like pieces of the card missing. So this one I would consider damaged. So you can tell right here. Hold on, let me pull it out. You can't see it through the plastic. As you can see, there's a crease that goes all the way across from one point of the card to the other. And you look at the back. Piece of the card's missing. It just gone. <laughs> so this card I would consider damaged. All right, now once you uh, found out what the condition of your cards are, now you gotta uh, find out the rarity of them. So we're gonna go back to the front. And so this is a Mega Rayquaza. That's our near mint card. And uh, the rarity is rare, ultra rare, because the whole uh, card is holographic. And then you have hollow rare, which we already know about. Only the picture is holographic. And you have shattered hollow. See how it looks like a broken glass shatter? And then you just have normal rare. It has a star right there. And then you have reverse hollow where this is all hollow right here and this is not hollow so it's a reverse hollow and then this is also a black star promo card 
Then you have the new reverse hollows. So again, this is not holographic, but the outside is. Reverse holographic, these are the new cards. Then we have some Japanese cards, holographic, rare. And let's see. Ah, these are uh, stamped cards. So for some reason, they think that these are a reverse uh, hollow because it has a stamp on it. So there's also this card without a stamp. So you want to look at the card that has a stamp on it. All right, let's see what else we got here. All right, so we got a full art. It has actually a texture to the card. See how these like little lines? So these can consider full art cards and the art goes all the way across the card. That's also why it's called full art. Then we got some more hollows. More hollows. Ah, here we go. So I was telling you before, cards can actually have different backgrounds. So this one is actually, oh sorry, next page. Uh, just a holo, or reverse holo rare. Actually, I think it'd be ultra rare because I think it's holographic there too. Yeah, so ultra rare. And look back, it's normal Pokemon cards. But there are these ones. So this is Blaziken EX. And it's a signed card, but don't worry, it's not like a real autograph printed out. But it has this weird silvering background. So, or back, yeah, background. So you want to check the back of the card. And they actually came out with these Pokemon World Championship cards where they reprinted the deck that won the World Championship for that year. And those are worth less usually than the actual Pokemon, so you want to keep an eye out for that. Alright, now we know what the rarity of our cards are. Next thing, we gotta look at the cards. So, let's go back to the beginning. Oh, actually, before we do that, I forgot one more card. So, with uh, the new cards, they come with these big cards called Jumbo cards. So they're usually prom promo cards, and they're bigger than the average card. So if you look, small card, Jumbo card. So that's how you would look that up. All right, now back to this. So you wanna pick your favorite search engine, doesn't really matter which one. And it helps if you have the name. So this is Mega. Rayquaza, EX, so you want to put that into a search engine. Next, you want to know where it's from, so this number here really helps. It's a 76 out of 108, so search that, and you'll get a whole bunch of uh, prices and stuff, and we'll get how to um, value your cards and which prices to look at in a second. We're just going to keep going. All right, so you have a Rayquaza, EX different than Mega Rayquaza EX. And he's a promo card that helps. And if you wanted to be more specific, XY69. So he's probably from the series XY. And number 69 promo card. So put that in your search engine and you should uh, come up. And there's gonna be multiple prices for it too. But like I said, we'll get to the pricing in a second. All right, let's see what else. So if you have a card where, hey, I don't even know what this Pokemon's car, uh, called, and it's in Japanese. I don't read Japanese. So it's about, works most of the time, so you want to put in Japanese Pokemon, and for Japanese Pokemon cards, they have a number here, number 196. So you want to put Japanese Pokemon card, number 196, and usually it'll come up with the Pokemon card or someone, something similar to it, but keep scrolling until you find the right one you want with the picture. And then, let's see what else. Oh yeah, with the stamp card. Like I said, when you search Mewtwo, and this number, it'll probably come up with a card that doesn't actually have a stamp. So you wanna keep scrolling until you find the one with the stamp, because the ones with the stamp are worth more. So that's good. We already got to that, Japanese cards, you just look. And so, yeah, this is a full art. Ah, new Japanese cards. So I don't deal too much with these, but same thing. So if you don't know the name of the card, just by looking at it, you just want to go Japanese Pokemon card and look down here at the set number, just like the uh, English ones, 21 out of 94. And it should pop up on your web browser.
All right, so now I've popped it up on my web browser and now there's all these prices. So I have some tips. So first thing you wanna look at is how much the card sold for. This is the best way to tell how much your cards are worth because hey, cards are only worth of how much people are willing to pay for them. So if it's sold, it's probably worth that price. Now, let's say the website doesn't have any uh, sold prices, it just has a bunch of multiple prices. What do you do? Well, I recommend taking the average price. So if you go in and you search our website and it has multiple prices, I would take the average price. Now let's say, all right, I have the value of my Pokemon card. I want to sell it. So I have some tips for selling your Pokemon cards. Be reasonable. So, when you put it up online, people are going to offer you uh, prices for your cards because no one wants to pay full price, especially on local websites where you can sell your cards. Next, if you want to sell fast, go lower than the store's price. So, all the prices you see online, those are stores usually. So, if you want to sell it fast, I recommend going below the store's price. All right, so now that we did that, I'm gonna try to do this uh, segment called Phony Fridays. My friend uh, Josh, he bought some Pokemon cards for me and uh, he gave me all these phony cards. And we're gonna show you why they're uh, fake. So, I actually think we should use our Jumbo card here and look at the back. Because, like I said, the back is usually the way it gives away. So, we got all these phony cards. We're going to look it up real close. So you can see, this would be a shadowless card. If it was real, because there's no shadow and it's a base set card. But look, why does it look like so texturized? If you look at a real one, let's see, that's my shadowless Charizard. Looks how nice and crisp it is doesn't look textured at all. So this, someone probably printed on their home computer. And look at the back. So you have different coloring. It's a little lighter. It's really off-centered. So that's another indication it's fake. So you got fakey, another fake, ultra fake. All right. So we got another card here. So you look it's, uh, very like almost digitized, like someone copied it. Back looks completely different. Another thing, yep, digitized. Back looks different. All right, let's get to the, some of the funnier ones. All right, ooh, this one says it's first edition, but if you know your Pokemon cards, this is not a jungle card. Usually people who make fight cards, they usually make mistakes because they really don't care. They just want to sell them. So, first edition jungle. There are first edition jungle cards out of this, but this is uh, considered a shadowless card by a fake person who made this. And there's no shadowless jungle cards, I can tell you that. Alright, so. Here we go. Another one. So, again, they said this was shadowless. Has a 99, has a text. Text looks really messed up. And they messed up by putting a jungle symbol on there. So, yeah, we can definitely tell that this is a fake card. Yeah, again, super terrible card. <laughs> Has the jungle symbol. But, yeah. So, yeah, do not buy these, please. People uh, think these are worth a lot of money, but no, they're actually just paper. That's how much they're worth there. It's just paper. All right, that's it all I have for today. Um, come back tomorrow and I'll have a new video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.